evil comes in many different shapes and sizes. And this statement is nothing short of the truth in D. Gray Man. With only a single glance, you can begin to notice that these horrific beings, otherwise known as Akuma, are monsters who only know their self-loathing and personal torment. There's a lot of mystery surrounding the demons of D. Gray Man, known as the Akuma. Yet, we understand that they come from the Millennium Earl. You could say that the Millennium Earl is their god. Unfortunately, the Earl would be more akin to the Devil, with his most promising method of manipulation being human desire. With that being said, there is a piece of the Millennium Earl inside of everyone. Knowing this, he allows human beings to fall victim to what the Millennium Earl embodies, with that being sadness, regret, hatred, and above all else, sin. To submit to the Earl is to submit to yourself. This would describe the practice of becoming an Akuma in its purest form. For instance, we as humans suffer. We as humans go through hardship on a day-to-day -day basis. And with the experience of losing a loved one being so painful, we would agonize over a feeling we wouldn't ultimately even understand. Allowing the Millennium Earl to take advantage of your ignorance, making you the Earl's puppet. You were none other than one of his devices from the start. And he knows this. This is what makes him all the more terrifying. He does little to nothing yet he allows you to ultimately experience excruciating pain. Asking you for a contract at your weakest moment, with you desperately agreeing to his terms, all the while giving you exactly what you want, ultimately turning you or your loved ones into his slaves. You see, this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for you, your sadness, your anger, and your pain, making you a tool for destruction, which brings the question, does the true strength in humanity lie dormant within their evil feelings and negative emotions? Or does true strength come from the compassion and love of others? This is what makes both sides engaging in this war so interesting. Both sides use complete opposite methods to fight amongst each other, yet the outcome is still the same. They end up killing each other. And with casualties on both sides in this war, there is bound to be room for improvement through evolution. This is possible through a process you wouldn't normally expect, which just so happens to be death. Akumas evolve from different levels of strength by killing people. Starting from the beginning, a level 1 Akuma shows no sense of individuality. You will begin to notice immediately that every level 1 Akuma looks the same, with this statement also being true for most Akuma. As a level 1, Akuma are quite literally weapons to be used. With cannons protruding from their bodies, level 1 Akuma will shoot bullets that are laced in poison only to destroy human flesh by tearing it apart from the inside. When a level 1 begins to evolve, it becomes a level 1.5. In this state, a 1.5 begins to suck in its own cannons. Which isn't to say that it's no longer dangerous because it can still shoot even with its cannons inside of its own body. Why does a 1.5 look this way? This is due to its sole focus on evolution. When an Akuma is in this state, the body itself begins to resemble that of an egg, eventually hatching only to progress into its new life as a level 2 Akuma. And uh, this, this is where they get kind of scary. 
With murder comes nurture, and a level 2 Akuma begins to develop its own individuality and personality. Naturally, they are sadistic in nature, and perform acts of cruelty with ease. On accountability for its lack of its own experience and ability, a level 2 Akuma still somehow manages to find its own creative ways to torture human beings. Whether it's mentally or physically, when you're in the presence of a level 2 Akuma, you are no longer safe. Unlike a level 1, a level 2 will play around with your corpse for its own gruesome pleasure. Once evolving into a level 2, a specific Akuma will gain its own unique ability, such as shape-shifting, which allows an Akuma to mimic your abilities and use them at its own leisure. And it doesn't stop there, it can also take the form and shape of anything in the environment, which really goes to show how versatile a level 2 Akuma really is. However, the true danger of a level 2 Akuma does not lie within its versatility, but its own individuality. A level 2 Akuma's form can be just about anything, and its ability can be just about anything as well, which makes a level 2 Akuma extremely difficult to deal with because you can never know what to expect from it, especially with so many different forms. And now we have the next level of Akuma, with that being level 3. Now's a good time as any to mention this, but outside of every single Akuma, level 2s are the only ones that have distinct forms and stand out from each other. Level 1s, 3s, and so on all retain the same form. Although level 3s all share the same likeness, they are not pushovers in the slightest. Level 3s are insanely strong and it would be best to never face one by yourself. What really makes them stand out and what could really make you want to piss yourself is their ability. They are amazing at using dark matter in their own right, which allows them to do things such as manipulate gravity and disintegrate matter to a cellular level. Talk about deadly. And it really doesn't stop there because if the Millennium Earl is just so happening to have a bad day, he can just fuse all the level 3s together into one giant Akuma. Chances of survival are slim to none, especially with this giant Akuma being able to shoot thousands of lasers in an instant to completely destroy a city, with its durability being in its own league entirely. Meaning, it's really tough to kill. That's if you're lucky enough to survive. With a sudden concentration of dark matter, this Akuma can literally destroy everything in sight, leaving nothing in its path. And as impossible as it may seem, it only gets worse. A level 4 Akuma is the embodiment of evil itself. This Akuma really needs no introduction in the slightest, with it being one of the rarest Akumas you could ever run into. Unlike a level 2 which evolves from an egg, a level 4 bursts through the womb of a mother as if the form itself is celebrating a birth. Corpses, flesh, and any negative emotion you could possibly think of pile on top of each other until it eventually forms this disturbing figure. Finally, bursting open the womb, it gives life to a grotesque creature, which resembles that of an angel, yet it acts as if it's the exact opposite. It spreads carnage to friend and foe alike, simply for its own personal satisfaction. A level 4 Akuma is unpredictable, and to make matters worse, its strength is nothing to scoff at. With a snap of the finger, it can propel you forward and send you flying at a great distance, only to leave a crater on any surface due to the impact. With its fingers, it can slice people in two easily. If a level 4 gets bored enough, it can leave an abyss right where you're standing. 9 times out of 10, everything in its presence will die. With that being said, it still has a wide array 
of weapons to use. With its arms turning into Gatling guns, it can shoot you with infectious bullets that will ultimately poison your body and kill you from the inside. A single bullet can be fatal. And in order to make sure it doesn't miss a single shot, a level 4 Akuma can simply scream and paralyze you. Keep that level 4 away from me. With that being said, if you made it this far into the video, be sure to like the video and subscribe. Bye-bye now.